but someone knows something, yet everyone plays ball. I say we round them all up, let's brain fingerprint them all. Hello everybody, this is Eric Jose on Making a Murderer on YouTube. I cover the Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey cases, but also as time passes I've been covering other cases such as The Staircase or OJ and many wrongful convictions of youth. Uh, I go over the documents, the photos, the videos, anything case related. So stay tuned, because I have many more videos just like the one you're about to see. Everybody, how you doing today? We're here, as you can see, talking with Mr. Capaldi. We were supposed to be here with Mr. Hodnot as well, but hey, I'm wearing the I'm wearing the Aussie uh, shirt here today, to to so he's here with us in spirit. But uh, personally, I think the Sandman got to him, uh, yes. and uh, midnight just wasn't uh, doable for him uh, where he is right now. So, anyways, it's unfortunate we don't have Mr. Hodnot with us or Judge Will Fox, as some of you may know him and recognize him. And love him, uh, anyways. <laughs> yeah. So he's a good judge. <laughs> yes. So not so. Anyways, we're here today with Mr. Capaldi, and uh, we're going to just be talking about basically a couple things. We're going to start out talking about the Ricky Hochstetler case. For those of you who don't know, recently the anniversary of Ricky Hochstetler's tragic hit and run death uh, just passed, and um, I have been doing a video every year. For yep. Ricky, for Ricky, on on that anniversary, and so I almost forgot this year, but I knew I'd be talking with Paul, and I thought I was going to be talking with Mark today as well, but unfortunately, he didn't make it. But I knew we'd be able to talk about it today, and I know Paul knows a lot about the Ricky case; he studied it a bit and everything. So you know, we can do Ricky some justice talking about him here today, and some of the just fishy things with his case, and how again it ties in with characters who are tied in with fishiness in the Hallbach case. And so you used to begin so that you guys can understand there's a pattern. I know some of you are just coming off of MAM2. You watched MAM2. You don't even know who Ricky Hochstetler is. You're sitting there looking at me going right now going, who the hell are you talking about, Eric Jose? Well, we're going to tell you. He's a kid in Manitowoc who was run down on the side of the road, uh, unfortunately, on January 10th, um, back 19 years ago, was it, Paul? 1999, wasn't it? 1999 so unfortunately you know very sad. 20 sorry 20 years ago yeah then. 20 so 20 sorry. years now yeah so anyway 20 years ago the 20 year anniversary but uh very tragic obviously ricky was very well loved by his family um i've actually uh studied his case a bit um spoke with his family on facebook a bit and and they're all really nice people and they're not even really mad at the law enforcement in this case like i am um, they really are more interested in finding out what happened to their loved one. Yep. And, uh, and so God bless them. Um, but also in Ricky's group, you get, you get a lot of people that reach out to the admins of that group that anonymously send stories of things that they've encountered in that area mm. of Wisconsin. They yep. do it anonymously so that they won't get any, you know, uh, retribution from it. Yep. But there's some interesting things that, that people talk about in that group when it comes to that. But um, anything you want to say about Ricky real quick before I go in and tell the story of it? Uh, no, no, other than the fact that one of the, one of the, 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 the good things about um, the, the wrecking, um, wrecking Crew book is that there's a chapter about Ricky in right. there. Um, yeah. And John Farrakh, of course, um, did a lot of articles well certainly um, he, he, he certainly wrote an article in the uh, he was with the po no he was with the his articles used to appear in the post present but he wasn't right. actually um, up employed by the post present he was employed by some other like like sort of news agency wasn't he no I think maybe was it US USA America or, or it I can't, I can't remember exactly what it was but you always got his articles in the post crescent you always got um, in interesting stuff every time he did it and he's also done one or two videos where he's actually spoken with um, the mother Debbie 
Yeah, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and that's true. It's that, that it does talk about Ricky and John Farrakh's book. For those of you who haven't read it yet, there's there is a chapter in there about Ricky. Um, it's there's a good reason why that is is because yeah, Ricky Ricky was run down. Um, the first two officers on the scene were Bushman, mm-hmm. another another name we know from Avery. Um, and then uh, it was uh, Herman, right? Somehow Herman was there within like three minutes of this happening. Uh, basically, it was the, him and Bushman were the first ones on the scene, but they were there within minutes apparently, which yep. is odd. Um, and we so they they end up supposedly processing this scene, Manitowoc does or whatever. And they basically months and months and months go by, and basically nothing happens. They're not they don't find anything. They don't. There's there's uh, two spots where they actually found pieces of, of a automobile grill, and yep. they're not sure which spot might have been the grill from the grill when it struck Ricky. And there's all this question, and they didn't call at the time for DCI. Hmm. And here is the part that's really going to kill you because yep. they didn't call for DCI at the time. The Ricky's mother Debbie called Link. Okay, who was basically yep. in charge of this at the time when she called and said, you know, hey, isn't there anything else we can do this or that or whatever? Can we call DCI and see if they have anything that can help with this or whatever? And Link tells her, oh, we've already contacted DCI and there's nothing they can do. Well, eventually, Deb contacted DCI herself. And when she did, she mentioned what Link had told her. And the person at DCI went and checked the files and said, no, no, we've never received any correspondence about this case until you called us today. But literally, Deb was the first one informing DCI that something had happened to her son. Okay. Absolutely. It goes a step further. DCI actually had very, very sophisticated equipment that they had at their disposal to be able to do pretty precise measurements for for potential recreations and things like that, that could have helped with this. And DCI had that. That's, this is another thing that was found out. So we have, a, once again, we have Link, okay? He's telling the, the, the victim's mother that they contacted DCI and there's nothing DCI can do. The mother ends, eventually ends up contacting DCI and telling DCI that, about this, that, that what Mr. Link or what Detective Link told her. And then DCI informs her that that never happened and that they actually do have very specialized, you know, equipment and stuff or whatever that could help out very much with a hit and run like that. So when you take all that into account, it's just you start to see a tapestry there where it was just corruption in that Manitowoc, you know, sheriff's department that was just it was just there it was just deep seated in there and it was it was comfortable okay yep. i mean to be able to bald face lie to a victim's mom like that the way link did i mean phew, man dude that's something else well not not just not, yeah not just link but colburn as well colburn as well says to uh, says to the mom doesn't he about the fact that uh, you know we don't think that uh, that you know we'll be able to ever solve this one you know because it's probably somebody that's gone off in, in you know somewhere else you know and and you know that that's that's Colburn that is MTSO's crackerjack detective yeah. you know if if the best one in Manitowoc can't do it then what hope for the rest of them you know but no let's cut to, let's cut to the chase here Robert Herman was investigated twice yes by DCI exactly because he picked up the parts and was supposedly going around parking lots as you call them Car yeah. parks, I presume, or or, or places where um, where vehicles were for sale and all that kind of stuff to see right. if he could match the grill. But isn't it interesting how, um, in, in case one or two people haven't heard about this or seen the letter, um, Stephen Avery actually wrote to Colette Henry, didn't 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 he? Yes. And he, and in that letter he says, you should ask Robert Herman why did he have to either scrap or um, yeah I think scrap scrap his pickup oh, yeah. words words to that effect you know oh, ask, yeah. ask ask Robert Herman why did he why did he scrap his pickup yeah. and I'm thinking hold on a sec 
So Steve, Steve's heard something about it. Right. Well, of course, Robert Herman owns a salvage company in competition mm -hmm. in competition Cleveland, with Cleveland, Cleveland Auto Salvage. Yeah, Cleveland Auto. But, it, but you know, you, you can you can imagine that within the auto salvage business, people hear things. Yeah, sure, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I thought. I mean, I, I used to work in a in the garage myself. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, you you hear a lot of things in the uh, in the garage trade, and I'm sure you do in uh, in, in all in all sort of walks of life. But, uh, right. Yeah, it was um, it was it was it was a real shame for um, uh, the, the Hockstetlers because uh, I mean, Ricky was just what 17 years old yeah. at the time. He was just walking back from a friend's house. He'd been yep. to a party they'd had some pizza, pizza and yeah. watched a couple of films admittedly it was, it was quite late at night I think it was like between one and two in the morning when he got hit yeah. yes. um, and the suspicion was that it was somebody driving back drunk from is it is it the bar mill or the mill bar yeah something like that yeah it, it's some place in right just, nearby right yeah yep and, and and if you follow <laughs> the direction of travel it um, it, it does suggest, as as it says in John Farrakh's book, it could have been somebody that was heading down towards Cleveland, where both um, Herman, well, both both Herman brothers, you've got Robert, you've got Todd Herman as well. He's also come under suspicion. Yeah, right. Um, apparently, we've also got the account of a doorman who remembers one of them, kind of staggering out the place. Yeah, yeah, you know. Well, because cause, it's, cause mean, they had a... yeah, I mean, what it, I mean, there's a lot of suspicion, and like you were saying, that Herman himself was investigated twice by DCI, but they couldn't seem to get enough to be able to bring charges or anything, or to really solidify the case against him. But I mean, there's just a lot of you know ridiculous things around the Ricky case. I mean, Link lying to the victim's mother, uh, you know the. The whole thing of Herman being twice investigated. The fact that Bushman was the lead investigator on it originally. And Bushman, yep. who is hugely involved with Steve, what happened with Stephen Avery in 1985, uh, even showed up, came out of retirement to, uh, to actually help with the Halbach investigation. Um, just like, I mean, all the fishiness around Bushman. And all these guys are big names in Ricky's case. And it's yep. just, you know... It makes you just go, yeah. What a, you know, these guys are something else, basically. Because of course, in in 1999, uh, Tom Thomas Kasurik was still sheriff. Peterson didn't take over till uh, 2003, right. and then Herm, Herman took over in 2006. You know, so. Uh, right. Um, I, I I have a funny feeling though. He did Herman did get some sort of, if not a rep reprimand, it was some sort of. Note to say that you know he shouldn't have done this because because of picking up car parts, putting them into his car, and then driving around, uh, supposedly in the early hours of the morning, mm -hmm. with with this uh, with these right. with these parts that that, that, that could have been, um, he, he could have contaminated. I'm not too sure how, but anyway, that's that's exactly what uh, what uh, well. That's that's apparently what what he did. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, if 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 he did if he did come out the place and he was as to use a Scottish term he was steaming, then I, I, I wouldn't want him driving around in the early hours of the morning around the rest of uh, Manitowoc, would you? <laughs> right. You know, yeah. Right. Exactly. But the, but the, but then they're the law. They can do what they can do what they like. There, no, there's nobody there's nobody going to stop them. Yeah, you saw the news that's in the news re here recently about a Wisconsin judge that um, basically asked the officer to to ignore the fact that he was drunk or whatever. He asked for police courtesy or whatever. Um, yep. You know, basically, uh, basically drunk driving, but didn't want to get arrested for it. You know, mm -hmm. but so. Oh I mean, well, of course, of course, that sort of things. That that thing, that sort of thing does sometimes happen. It shouldn't do, but it does. I mean, yeah. the thing is, interestingly, you know, talking about drunk driving. Of course, that's that's that was one 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 of the other blocks on Peg Lightsalaga's copybook, wasn't it? 
that yeah. she got done for drunk driving. Yep. And she did get done. And she so what? She, ob- she, she did get done, so she wasn't asking for any kind of courtesy. Mm-hmm. Well, she was also, I think, well, I don't think she was in a position of strength at the time either. Well, yes, it's not what you know, it's who you know, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Whoever's got the the bigger sandbox. Yes. (laughs) 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 So. Anyway, Edinburgh. Okay, so yeah, you got to go see Stephen Drizzen and Laura Nyrider there in Edinburgh. Yep. So what was that? What was that like? It was it was good. I, I mean, I've been now to three separate shows. The first one was. Uh, back in um, February of nearly two years ago, and that was to see Dean and Jerry at the Usher Hall in Edinburgh, um, and that that was that was huge. There, the capacity of the Usher Hall is two thousand two hundred, and right. it was it was pretty full. I would say within a couple of hundred, you know, yeah. so like there was two thousand there. Um, then when I went to Amsterdam, um, it was, it was qu- quite, quite a big theater and, and it was mainly the, the sort of front seats that were taken. I would say there was a, there were several hundred there, you know, um, I wouldn't say there was a, there was a huge amount there. Um, and I'm, and I'm sure that because of the, you know, the fact that, you know, it's <laughs> obviously my I'd come from Scotland, you know, English speaking, you know, but you know, for, mm. for I'd imagine for, for for quite a lot of people in 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 Amsterdam, in Holland, you know, I'd imagine you know there'd be plenty of people that have never heard of making a murder. So, I mean, certainly if they came to the Scottish borders, you know, mm. we've we've got a we've got a big town hall here, the Volunteer Hall holds six hundred people. I would be very surprised if if if, if any. People to do with making a murderer came to Gala Shields. There would be a a, a big turnout, you know. Right. So, um, so when I went to the Queen's Hall, its capacity is I've, I've made a note of it here. Capacity of nine hundred, mm. and it was it was pretty full. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was I was I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I mean, let's, let's put it this way: at the at the halftime interval. There was a, there was a break for 15 minutes, and the queue to get to the loose was that big. I nipped into the pub next door. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't messing about. Uh, and and like I said to you, one one of the things I I should have done is I should have had little flyers done, yeah. advertising YouTube channels. You know, to to find out more about the case. You know, go and check out some of these some of the some of the the, the, well, all of your videos, the, you know, the, you, you know, your, your perplex, your cases, your uh, fresh start Mondays. I mean, I, I, I like the the guy Eddie going. I'll, there's 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 loads of them. Well, Ducky's done some great stuff, you know. It's, mm-hmm. And and some of some of these are appearing for the first time, aren't they? You know, and and just just if, if people are that interested in going along and spending, I mean. Twenty-seven pound a ticket. I've got my ticket up there. Twenty-seven quid. Then you add on the booking fee. Then you add on the cancellation fee. Then you add on something else and something else, and you know it's thirty-five quid. <laughs> you know it's uh, it's not cheap, is it? You know, but but no. well worth it. Well worth it. Um, so yeah, I would I would say there was about seven hundred, six to seven hundred people in the hall. Um, it, was, it was quite good. You, you're like this. They came on. They came on. They were played on mm. by uh, five hundred miles. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and if I get drunk, if I haver, uh, you know I'm going to be. I'm going to be the man who gets drunk. So to you. And if I haver, then you know I'm going to be. I'm going to be the man that's havering to you. <laughs> yep, we know that song. Yep, yep, yep. Um, also, apparently, when. Uh, Lord of saying that when when they first arrived at the hall, the, the sound engineer was was playing the Clash. Mm-hmm. I fought the law and the law won. 
Oh. And she, imme <laughs> she immediately went across and said, well, you, you can ditch that one tonight. You're not, you're not playing that one tonight. <laughs> you can change that. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, the, 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 the sort of chat started off with, um, and, and we got um, a, a lot of talk from uh, uh, St Steve and Laura, and the, and the host was very good. You know, they, they basically, you know, she, she just sort of interjected occasionally um, so, so I've, I've made notes about the fact that, you know, Steve Drizzen was talking about how when, uh, you know, when Steve and Avery was released in, 19, in 2003, two, yeah, two, in 2003. Two, 2003, and, and, and I've heard this mentioned by other people, but when you hear it enough times, you begin to realize the poster child. He was the one, the, the big name. All the politicians wanted to be associated right. with Stephen Avery. And it, and it was such, such a big, you know, political case. Right. Um, what, what, um, yes. I made a note. I, I, I'm not too sure. I, I put this in chronological order how it was presented about the fact that Brendan's case was the first... In obviously in in, um, in Wisconsin to be videotaped, right. his interrogation right. Right. because because of the, uh, the, the the Avery task force, which then got changed in it to the um, what did what did it get called changed to name wise the uh, Justice Commission something like that yeah yeah yep yeah. um, th then 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 we got a bit from Laura Nyrider. And she was telling us about the fact that uh, she wanted to be a business lawyer. Mm -hmm. She actually ended up in Steve Drizzen's class by mistake. Oh. <laughs> she, she had no intention of getting involved in wrongful convictions. Mm -hmm. um, and, and now it's, uh, you know, all these years down the line, it's, it's completely different. Yeah, um, yeah so she joined uh, Steve Drizzen's class. Um, and yeah, they That's deal with funny. a lot, a lot of cases, lots and lots of uh, cases of, of false confessions. Um, then, then we had Steve Drizzen talking about the um, the motivation, if you like, to to coerce. Um, and I'm. I'm I'm, I'm not. I'm, I've always asked this question, haven't I? You know, at what point did Bert and Ernie? At what point mm -hmm. did they did they realise that they were, you know, coercing this confession out of him? Was it pre-planned? Mm -hmm. um, I think so. Well, I, I suppose possibly Stephen Drizzen needs to needs to be careful. How he words it, you know. Yeah. But but he he actually said that um, he didn't think that uh, we get the fast bender set out to coerce a confession. He's he's given them the benefit of the doubt, I suppose, you know. Yeah. But he, here's here's the thing. You know. His confession was literally two days before Stephen Avery hired Dean Strang and Jerry Butin. And, and, and his hiring of Strang and Butin with, with the money that he got, mm -hmm. that did send a message to Manitowoc that they were worried. Because up until that point, all they had was this... Was this evidence that they had found, which they should never have been there to find. You know, right. all we've got is a load of planted evidence. And this was why, you know, two days later, it, it's a little bit like, you know, oh, guess what? We found the bullet. Oh, look, we've we found somebody that's, that's, that's confessed to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Two days later. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And... and, and Sorry, and another thing that that's, that's, that I, that I mentioned to you, I'm, I'm sure. Um, no, no, I, sorry, it was, it was in 
it was in in the video I did recently, and lots of people have obviously pointed this out that if if Theresa Halbert had been shot in the head and Brendan had been there. <laughs> He wouldn't just remember it. You know, it would be a nightmare. It would be an ever-recurring nightmare for him. Yeah. Because, I mean, you speak, you've spoken to him. You know uh, what he's yeah, like. Briefly. Albeit briefly. I mean, also, we, 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 both you and I have contacts, shall we say, mm -hmm. contacts that pass information to us. Um, I, I remember, I. I went around for a week with one of the biggest smiles on my face. It wasn't the fact that I'd had a letter back from Brendan. It was the fact that somebody had been to visit him and then messaged me and said, Brendan says, thanks for your letter. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that, that means, that means a great deal. But anyway, um, sorry, we're, we're digressing. <laughs> we, we, we then, we then got on to something which, which, I suppose it's quite interesting because, you know, Brendan's 16 years old, and and he's his IQ isn't that huge, is it? No. No. And teenagers at that age, they do come out with crass things. They do stupid things. They're they're they're, they're wired differently at that age, um, and and it, and it was the fact that. Um, we get in Fastbender. They, they they often go into quite long narratives, quite long sentences, mm -hmm. in in which which I'm sure at times Brendan is just sort of listening to them, and it's just yeah. a drone. It's just something. It it doesn't really make much sense to him at all. I don't all. think Brendan understands what they were asking him to say. I don't think he understands mm -hmm. what what all. What, what what you know? I don't think he got it. I don't think he, yep. you know, having probably never had sex in his life, he just a lot of this stuff they wanted him to say. He just didn't really have any personal experience and didn't have the actual knowledge in his brain to be able to pull from to be able to give them an, a convincing account. That's yep. I mean that's another thing that's obvious with Brendan's confession is yep. that he clearly just doesn't even have any knowledge of the act whatsoever because he's really bad at, at telling a convincing story regarding it um, but, personally so well yeah I mean who shot him in the who shot her in the head he did why didn't you tell us that earlier not he doesn't he doesn't use the term because I couldn't remember it yeah you know I couldn't think it, of it. because because that's one of the oh I, I I thought you meant knives and I thought you meant scissors cutting hair and yeah, it's, it's right. ridiculous. Um, so, so basically, in um, 2010, um, Steve Drizzen was saying that he really did think that um, he he would he would get Brendan out oh, based on the fact that he had just won a case of a 14 year old yeah. that had been wrongly, um, you know, sort of coerced. Um, and I and I did did send a, a, an email to Steve to ask about these two question the, these two two cases. I mean, Steve Drizzle goes back. Obviously, he's been in the game such a long time. Um, there, there was a case back in um, 1990 that he uh, he eventually, after seven years. He managed to free an eleven-year-old. Yes. You know, and then eleven, and I don't know quite who the names are. Um, I think did um, Steve Drizzen not have something to do with your um, the, the case that you've mentioned in the past? The is it Devante Sanford? Yeah, he was. I believe he was involved with Devante Sanford. Yeah. Yeah, and and we also got to hear about the fact that. Um, uh, I think Laura Nyrider and and him uh, was one or the other have been were involved in the West Memphis case of Damien Eccles. Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it was Laura Nyrider had 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 some did some work on that. 
and I, I've, I've, and you can probably explain this better to me. I've put a note: Pearl Jam, Johnny Depp, and Peter Jackson. Yeah, Pearl Jam's a band. They did yep. a song called Jeremy. People, a lot of people know who Pearl Jam is. Eddie yep. Vedder, the lead singer. Uh, Johnny Depp, the actor. Captain Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. And um, what was the other thing you said? Peter Jackson is Peter the director Jackson of, is of Lord the of the Rings. director of Lord of the Rings, yeah. And he also did some tweets, didn't he, when Making a Murderer 2 came out? Yes. Yeah. And it would be good if, 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 if people like this. Last night we were out for a meal and um, some friends of ours were talking about the the office. You know, the uh, there's the American office and there's the original Ricky Gervais office. Right. And I've, I've, I've never actually watched the original Ricky Gervais office. I quite like Ricky Gervais. I've, I've seen him in various things including An Idiot Abroad and various things. But he was one of the first ones when Making the Murderer first came out. I remember back in early mm -hmm. 2016, he was mm -hmm. straight in there. Yeah. Trying to publicize was, the... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, where, where did we get to? Where did we get to? Um, yes, here, here's, here's an interesting thing. <laughs> here's an interesting question. When when Stephen Avery is released, does that help Brendan Dassey? And the answer is no, not immediately. But the very next day, <laughs> Stephen Laura will be will be filing something to the effect of, right, you've got the wrong guy. You've also got the wrong guy in Brendan's case. Um, I, and I'm I, I I'm sorry, I can't be more specific than that other to say that um, it was it was mentioned that yes um, or it was asked has Kathleen Zellner and Stephen Drews and Laura Nida have they been sort of close working together and I seem to remember the sarcastic remark from Stephen Drews and was well what do you think <laughs> <laughs> which okay. to me suggests that yeah they've been pretty close that, you know, they're, they're bound to. I was thinking yeah. the other way. I was thinking maybe he was suggesting they don't. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. I think, I think it was, was obvious that, uh, you right. know, what, what, what she can develop can, can help. Here's, here's, here's something I've... I, sorry, I've just turned over my page. You have, a, you have a swig of your Dr. Pepper. Is it Dr. Pepper? Yeah. You've not got much left there. Not in this one. No? What's next, buddy? Yes. Um, I'm trying to make out my handwriting here. Oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Steve Risen was saying that... Um, before making the murderer was out, released on was it the fifteenth or the eighteenth of December, twenty fifteen? Mm -hmm. Was it the fifteenth or the eighteenth? Um, I know it was in December. I'm not sure which one yeah. of those days. Yeah, I think well, it was he, the fifteenth. Yeah. Well, do you know what he was? He was sent DVDs the week before, and he said he binge watched. Making a murderer oh, right. that weekend before it came out. Compelling, compelling he stuff. Was, Steve Drizzen was the first person to binge watch. Is, is basically what, what I put here. Oh, um, yeah. And also um, interesting, there was mention of a of a case in California, or um, a, a recently looked at um, decision. Was it by California to to change something? And the the, the Brendan Dassey case was quoted as an example for change uh, well I would imagine yeah. that that's going to be happening it's, a lot yeah 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 it's it, 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 it's a it's, it's a huge case I, I can't help thinking that you know when scooters <laughs> decided not to not to take the case um, 
I I am sure that that they they, they feel this this you know, as Steve Drizzen said, this case is too big of a heater. I think it's too big of a heater for probably even for scooters. I think it's too big of a heater to go on being ignored. So eventually, uh, something's got to give. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Eventually, <laughs> some, something's got to give. And so that's the day we're waiting for. Yep. So anyway, we then got on to um, the funding for the um, University Northwestern Law School. Um, the, the law school hasn't has, has never received any money from Netflix, um, and, and obviously there's there's been discussion about quite a few of the various sort of people involved with making a murderer, and you know the, the fact that that they haven't benefited or, or received much in the way of um, money. Mm-hmm. For their involvement in in the uh, in the documentaries, um, but, and it's it's. <laughs> could, I mean, I, I I suppose that the point there would be that if if they if Netflix had have given money when they didn't have to, if it was seen as a case of of of. Giving. Lining their pockets or something, yeah. Well, yeah, but but, but also also giving giving money away, it, it's almost like you know, admitting that you know we're on your side, you know, and we're not neutral oh, anymore. Sure, I guess. Yeah. You know, I, I I think I think that's that that's the problem, isn't it? You know, Pretty, wanting to yeah. seem to be you know some sort of neutrality. Or, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, but no, the um, for example the. It was mentioned that, uh, and I made a note of this, that you know the uh, certainly um, the yeah. Brendan Dassey and his family have never been charged anything for any of the work that uh, that has been done so far for him. Right, right. Which, which is, I think, fair enough. Um, then we got on to, Thankfully, as I say, making a murderer came out though. Brendan's had a lot of people in the world who've been donating a lot of money to uh, the Center for Wrongful Convictions over there at Northwestern. So hopefully that's helping them keep the lights on. Well, yeah, I've um, I've, I've had a couple of letters, emails from uh, Laura to thank me. Um, but <laughs> I'm sure quite a few other people have as well. Sure. Um, and... Uh, actually, a thousand others, uh, maybe. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm going to embarrass you now by mentioning the fact that um, mm-hmm. just in case people didn't realise this, um, and, and, I th- and I think, to be honest, it's important to mention this, is the fact that of the Control Question t-shirts, all of the proceeds, every dime, nickel, cent, whatever you want to call it, clam, you know, penny. Mm. All of the proceeds from the T-shirts goes directly to Brendan Dassey. Yeah. But not only that. Before they're even sold. Bef- exactly. Before you get your batch, you've already paid up front. Yes. Yeah. And I th- and I think that's important to mention that. So uh, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully I'll spare mm. your blushes. <laughs> 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 so, um, new governor. It was mentioned that you know, uh, ho- hopefully, with a new governor, there could be, you know, a, a difference in thinking, and that's certainly something that I I wrote to Steve Drizzen. You remember I sent him an email, literally a couple of days after the uh, Supreme Court, sorry, right. scooters, scooters. <laughs> decided decided not to. Uh, Look at Brendan's case, right. um, and and he sent me a really nice email back saying, you know, he's been in this game long enough to know that things can take a hell of a long decades for change to happen, but right. change will happen. Yeah, you know, and and, and I must admit, I, I admire the guy for the fact that he's you know he's still 
He's he's going strong, you know. He's 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 obviously a a bit of a bit of a warrior when it comes to when it when it comes to wrongful convictions, isn't he? You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that was mentioned, and, and and I think this is quite important, is that. Um, By the way, I think he's at the point of trying to cultivate the new generation of, oh, of course. You know, attorneys yeah. there. So. Yeah. A- a- absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Barb, mm-hmm. you made the point that Barb is Brendan's rock, mm-hmm. and that Barb was an obstacle was a huge obstacle to um, uh, Uyghur and Fassbender. Oh, and she yeah. did everything she could to try and, you know, to try and not, you know, there's there's no way that, 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 she, that she sort of, you know, gave up Brendan in order to save Bobby. No, that that, that isn't the case. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. Um, we, we then got, Obviously, we're in Scotland. We get on, we then got onto the discussion of um, the the verdicts: guilty, oh, not proven. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we go to Scotland, would, we got to hear would, about this. Would, would, would you like to go to the loo for a couple of minutes, and I'll just talk about no, it? <laughs> that's right. Go ahead, buddy. No, no, no. no. What basically um, Stephen Drizzen said: yes, it would be good. His only concern would be that if somebody it, was not proven would would the general public accept that and in actual fact here in Scotland if somebody is not proven that's it it's not proven right yeah. but there, but there was this concern that you know it, it, there was this ambiguity because of the not proven which meant that you know would somebody be treated differently yeah and obviously, well, I suppose they would. If, if they're found not guilty, they're found not guilty. But if they're found not proven, yeah, right. Then the perception is that that they might be guilty. The perception is that you know there might be evidence comes out in the future. Just means that there's reasonable doubt. Yeah, yeah. Um, one 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 of the saddest parts of the whole evening was the fact that. Um, I, I don't think um, Laura Nyrider or Steve Drizzen have much love for Ken Kratz. Oh, who does? Except for Leah. <laughs> there was he, every time his it was it was like being at the pantomime. Any time his name was mentioned, there was a resounding boom. <laughs> 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 you know, like this. <laughs> You like you like this. They mention the fact that Bert and Ernie. <laughs> it's not up to us to assess IQ. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, come on, for goodness' sake. Yeah. You also wouldn't know an. Uh, you also wouldn't know a scorpion if it came up and bit you. Yep. Yep. Here's here's the interesting thing though. I'll save the best till last. And that was this this whole ADPA business about the fact that. Um, was it reasonable for, um, first of all, for Judge Duffin to throw out the confession? Was it reasonable for any judge to, you know, in, in, in other words, you know, you didn't have to just prove that it was um, reasonable for his confession to be thrown out, but it had to be right. thrown out by every single judge be, in the yeah. land. Every single judge would have had to have said, in order to pass ADPA, the every term single is, uh, judge to any reasonable juror. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And basically, because of the fact that the original Seventh Circuit decision was two to one, because Hamilton dissented, mm-hmm. that immediately then opened the door to Wisconsin to the state to say, well, there you go. There's one judge who disagrees, mm-hmm. and 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 I, I, I find that quite interesting. You know the fact that what were the dynamics behind Brad Schimmel deciding to go for the arm bank decision? Right. right. It was yeah. the fact that Hamilton had dissented. Yeah, could be. 
and he knew that he knew that the he knew that the uh, three judge panel that um, decides whether or not people get get released uh, while they're uh, on bond or whatever. He knows that that entire panel went against Brendan, so he probably felt like going to on bank. He probably felt he might have a, a fighting chance. Yep. So definitely, yeah, definitely. So yeah, afterwards I I queued up as hundreds of us did and got my photograph taken. You've got the photo mm -hmm. of me with my eyes half closed while <laughs> Stephen Moore sat there, stood yeah. there, wide awake, but uh, I blinked at the wrong moment. <laughs> <laughs> but I did, um, he, he, he did, Stephen did, uh, did, did say to me, you know, when he saw the T-shirt, the, the he said, oh, that's to do with that tattoo. I said, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Like, Getting yeah, the word out there. Get the Tom, word out you, there. Sh you should remember because Tom Fassbender talks about it every time somebody puts a camera or a microphone in front of his face. Well, it's, he it's, claims it's, how it makes your client look guilty. Yeah. When it, when it actually, when it really proves how malleable your client was in the hands of investigators. But anyway, <laughs> actually, actually, you've reminded me. It was either, excuse me, was it? In a recent video this this week that you were doing in your live chat, there yeah. were one or two people I noticed that that questioned, "What do you mean T-shirts?" They did they didn't know what what the <laughs> T-shirt was. They might be new to the channel, I suppose. Yeah. Maybe came on recently and haven't heard anybody talk about them yet. So so what is the T-shirt? The one you're wearing. <laughs> yeah. well, let's okay. let's have let's have Paul stand up, everybody. Take a look at the shirt. So, he got a picture of himself with that t wearing that T-shirt with Stephen and Laura. So, which you know, it says you, you well you 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 added the Brendan Darcy, um, and by doing that, that um, I can't remember how how we worked it because. The original T-shirts I, I I got done, and they were all raffled, um, and all the money went to uh, went to Carla to disperse as as For she the, felt oh, fit. Yes, from the uh, original all, six. Yeah, the raffle. yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and then we eventually managed to get, <laughs> as I call him, Rip Van Winkle. But it wasn't me that called him that. First of all. It was Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> you managed to get them done after after I, me and Mark had failed miserable in getting any T-shirts done in Manitoba. You managed to do it, um, but but yeah, it says Brandon Dassey asked me about the control question. Copyright Eric Jose, 2018, um, and and basically when I. First, I think when I first started, I'd seen your videos. I I was aware of you, um, but when I first started getting in touch with you and, and exchanging messages, dropping comments on your YouTube channel, um, and then at, at that time, it was very much a case of, and, and you've always been obviously interested in Brendan, but Brendan's case was was very much at the forefront, wasn't it? Yeah. Because it was almost as if Brendan getting out would make a huge, would would be such a huge impact on Steve's case as well. Yeah, I do. I mean, I feel like the only reason Brendan was involved is because they felt their evidence was weak and shaky in the first place, and and so that's the only reason I feel like Brendan ever got caught up in this. Yep. So. But like G-Man Stephen Moore said, just because it's a poor investigation and a crappy investigation doesn't necessarily mean they got the wrong man. But if they did, it was more luck than anything else. But, you know. Could you spare me two minutes? I'm just going to go and fetch my accordion. Okay. I'm just... Go get your accordion, buddy. And I need to change seats as well.
Oh my God! What's he havering about now? I wonder. Here comes, here comes the havering accordion. You guys see what he's got going on here? This is the Charlie, the Charlie um, Barons Wisconsin flag. Got the little tailgate party. It says keep her moving instead of move instead of forward, which is what the Wisconsin flag says. So, but Charlie got keep her moving there. Uh, you know, I got the barbecue, the ice chest cooler here with the beers in it. Um, yeah, funny stuff. Then Paul's autograph picture of Charlie down here. Captain Crunch box. See, I told you Captain Crunch is from Britain. Look, there's proof right there. He's got little mementos of his of his countrymen right here. Look. Nice, nice, nice hair. Nice do. You know any Stacy songs yet? You know, you know any Stacy songs yet? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know a couple of them. You know a couple there's, of there's, there's one, there's one. It's called "Don't Get Strange." Yeah, I was gonna ask you if you knew "Don't Get Strange." <laughs> well, let's do what I know. What you got this? What you, what you got this out for? I know why you got this out for. So let's do that. It's because I like playing with my organ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're singing "Happy Birthday" to Miss Carla Chase, right? The Re Angel. So for everybody who doesn't know, Carla Chase is Stephen's niece. Today is her birthday. She runs the family uh, Facebook group, for those of you who don't know. Uh, today is her birthday. Paul and I are going to sing Happy Birthday while Paul plays the accordion, which is fitting because they're in Wisconsin. They love the accordion, and so this is this is going to be a special treat, I think. Are, are, you, are you singing the higher part, or am I? What? I'm singing happy birthday, dude. I don't know. I'm not getting too complicated. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Carla. Happy birthday. Where'd you go, Paul? You can't sing and play the accordion at the same time? Well, there's a time <laughs> delay. <laughs> oh, the time delay. I, I was waiting for you to catch uh, up with me. I was dang, like, I'll do it again. I'll do it again. I'll sing do that it. time delay. Right, right. I'll, I'll do it and I'll sing it, okay? Okay, now you do it and you sing it. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, we angel. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So now you gotta play good you gotta try and play Don't Get Strange on that thing. Come on. I <laughs> Give it a go, man. Come on. I want to see if you can it do it. It doesn't work. you got to do a guitar. you got to have a guitar, guitar. eh? In fact, in fact, I tell you, it's it's one or two people I noticed it uh, as well. Um, sorry, can I get rid of this stupid hat? It's really me, after all. <laughs> um, um, Stacy also plays banjo. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and also, there's that other there's that other guy. Uh, was it Maddox? Brand, Brandon, yes. is his name Brandon Maddox? Brandon Maddox. Has done, done a good song about the case. Listen, there, there's so much good stuff out there. Um, quickly, I was going to go through, very quickly with you, just to finish off, if I could. Because <laughs> I, I sent you a list of, you know, the look, looking back, a re-retrospective of some of the good things and some of the Okay, the, the letdowns, if you like. If I just quickly run through my, my top three letdowns in in this particular order. Okay. My my letdowns would be um, number three, and and, and I'm, I'm not looking to try and give quote guilt as ammunition here, but the occasional bickering and fallout between people following the case. Uh, you know, we, 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 we don't need any, any, any fallout between people. You know, I'm sure you, you, you've come across people of such a, a wide spectrum of points of view in this case, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I, I know it's difficult, mm -hmm. but, but, it, but if we are all wanting the same thing, um, you know, at, at times I, I just feel that sometimes we've just got to let let the egos let the egos go, you know, if you like, and, and don't yeah. don't be too hung up on uh, on on an ego. Um, I, I remember something that Travis said, you know, that, that you know it's one of the best things is is if you can can have a laugh at yourself. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, you've certainly had a laugh at me many a time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had a laugh at you many a Eunice, time, you know. What does the hate mean? <laughs> <laughs> Se secondly, secondly, let downs would be um, Angela Superwitch's attitude. Right. You know, it, it's been it's it that's just ridiculous, um, and how she can defend that 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 her point of view. Um, to me, it's clear she's pampering to the people that she knows within Wisconsin, within Manitowoc, Sheboygan, etc. Um, and, and I just hope that at some point her, her day will come and she will be dealt with. Um, yeah. But my, my number one let down. Your was... time is gonna come. Sorry, anyway. <laughs> That was good. That was good, dude. That was like good, that? dude. That was, right. yeah, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Number <laughs> that's one. Cold. Hey. Damn. Damn. That's a cold ass honky. That's, that's me. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no, number one letdown was missing the rally last June. Ah. Yep. With me and Mr. Hodden out there. Ah, uh, everybody there. Yeah, a lot of people there, but yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Lots and lots of people. But anyway, anyway, look, looking forward, the the highlights of the last year. Um, number three was me winning the oh Captain God. Crunch debate. <laughs> well, was that the fishy look? So much so that you're overturning it so that you can attempt to win it again. <laughs> Here's something else, my friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> N number two highlights of the past year was um, MEM two coming out. Yeah. Um, and 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 I must admit, before it came out, I was thinking, well, you know, for a lot of us, we've had front row seats now for such a long time. What can MEM two do that, you know, what 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 can MEM two tell us that we didn't already know? But but the, I, I think I think even for hardcore followers of, followers of the case, there were bits that that we found out that, that that we didn't that we didn't know. You know how certainly some of the dynamics of what's going on there. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know anything about Judge Superwitch's um, animosity towards Steve. I, I didn't know about that. Right. Um, number one, number one highlight. And I'm gonna. You, you, you might be blushing a bit here, but it oh, was really? seeing seeing the Eric Cozy 
on making a murderer um, channel growing, not just growing, but also developing. Um, and what I mean by that is you've, you've got people, but ev ev look, everybody that's that's come on board with you, great. And and you know some some of the people that that that, that, that come on, you know, it's it's like, whoa, where where did you come from? You know, where did all these different guys come from? Because that they're they're all, you know, they're all getting in touch. They're all reaching out. And they're doing so because of their interest in the case, you know. So I, I would say my number one was, you know, seeing your channel grow and develop. And, and I've always told you that. But also I would say the camaraderie of, yeah. uh, you know, the, the fellow YouTubers, because you know a lot of the, the other, you know, we all know each other. We, we all know the people that are, you know, doing the, the YouTube channels and and the camaraderie between the subscribers. Um, yes. and, and, you know, we've, Watching we've discussed the this crew, many. You know, grow and you know continue to to grow, and it's even moved to a new platform now, yep. so that it can so it can continue to grow and. Just watching that all happen has been an amazing thing as well. So yeah, absolutely. There's been a lot of a lot of blessings this year, and uh, um, a lot of misfortunes in terms of like Brendan, um, but but a lot of blessings too. And so you take the good with the bad and hope for the best next year. Yeah, I mean, I was I was also going to add the fact that, um, and and again, you, you just this will really make make you blush. Um, I, I I make no secret of the fact. That um, and you, and you um, I, remember, I remember you you once you once uh, replied with a, with a voicemail, dude. What are you doing to me? And I was trying to get all these people to to come and have a chat with you, all all the you know the viewers and, and that you know, and we've we've tried to get hold of a load of different people to to come and have a chat with you, you know, to you know to try and you know um, sort of raise. Awareness and, and also yeah. from the point of view that it's very interesting to get people on board that will chat, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say that you know you must never forget that the number one reason why people tune into your channel is because of you. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. The core you know? group. Yeah. But we're looking to continue to bring more people in, and so hopefully we're going to be able to bring in some more interesting content besides just me. But hopefully some other aspects to the channel that will make it continue to make it more and more interesting so that more and more people are drawn to come here and hit the subscribe button and well yeah remember um when i was thinking about doing a video and you said yeah just go for it <laughs> just what you, you said just go for it you know just, yes. just just you know do it you know and i'm saying yeah but i'm not i'm not trying to sort of usurp you yourself you know and you said oh no just go for it you know so i did one and you immediately <laughs> commented you know that was really good um and and i think i think i might have said i think i might have done a second one and said look, look this is probably going to be my last one and and you got back to me and said oh no 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 keep going keep going that would be a shame <laughs> if you were to stop now you know um you know so so partly be careful what you wish for yeah you know, but um, but, that, but that's the thing. You appreciate all that's going on out there. You know, you are the as as Fresh Start said. You are you are the black belt of um, YouTubers yeah. covering the case. Um, and and you know, it, it there's a certain kudos, isn't there, in the fact that you know you you've been doing the Scott Davis case to the extent where Megan Bruton is wanting to ban your videos in Australia. Oh, yeah. by the way, the latest, the latest one, it's uh, been demonetized <laughs> by YouTube. So she must have really got her, her feathers ruffled on that one. Because What does that mean? It means they it means that I had to I had to I had to ask for a manual review on it because um, they said it didn't hold with the community standards and I was like, Really? Yes. Yeah, so, so what's happened there? So it's it was demonetized. What does that mean? That means it does. That means I, it's not monetized. That means it's no money. What? My videos are monetized, Paul. I don't know. Did you not know this? All my videos are monetized. 
I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, you, you know what monetary you, means. You, you know what speak, monetary means. Are you are you speaking English? I yeah. swear you're not speaking English you at times. Know what, hello. Yes. <laughs> you know what monetary means. Monetary. Monetary. In, yeah, mon money. Like you're saying monetized. Yeah, monetization. Yes. There you go. Just got to put those together and figure it out. <laughs> okay, simple simple question. Does, Anyways, does that my mean... point is is that for me, I'm wondering if that's happening because she complained. Anyways, point. That's all I was trying to say. But is 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 your video still banned or blocked in Australia? I don't think I haven't gotten I, I haven't gotten anything saying it's banned in Australia yet. So. No, but I, I thought she'd got it sort of no, so that it was. It takes her usually. It takes it takes it takes longer than it, than a week. She it, it's she's got no other ones, older ones, yeah, but oh, she's got them blocked. Yeah, other older videos, yes, but this one is too new. She hasn't gotten it blocked yet. I'm I'm sorry. I'm I, I, I don't want to be appear thick, well, but I, I still don't that. know what this what this monetized business means. Yeah, I know. You're thicky. I am, yeah. Okay, explain to me. I'm a geriatric. You told me that last <laughs> night. <laughs> my life, my wife no, is killing herself laughing. Yeah, good. Right on. <laughs> so, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's just one video anyway. It's no big deal. So, it's uh, it's like I said. It, it, for me, when, when she gets them deactivated in Australia, I dance a jig. I think it's great. You, you can dance a jig? Mm -hmm, possibly. Well, you, uh, I'd, I'd like to see you and you and Laura on the dance floor then. Uh, yeah, I bet you would. Or you, you and you, Travis and Laura on the dance floor. <laughs> no. I, How about you and Travis. Travis and Laura on the dance floor? Travis when, is quite when a they dancer. come when they come to visit you in Scotland. And you're coming as well. Uh, yeah, well, we'll see. You're you're, you're going to be like the Jamaican bobsleigh team when they arrived in Canada. Yeah. You know, I'm going to have so much. Thermals. We'll have to we'll have to see if I can make it. Oh, you'll make it, all right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'll I'll pick you up at air, at the airport. No worries. <laughs> yeah, cause that's all. That's that's the lion's share of the problems with traveling to Scotland is getting from the airport to where. You know, I'm just kidding. Anyway, do you know? Do you know what we'll do is I'll is I'll meet you at the airport. Come up, come along nice and early in the morning. I'll meet you at the airport. We'll get the bus into Edinburgh Centre. And I'll take you to a whiskey bar. Oh, okay. See, seeing as you never found one in Utah. All right. Okay. Okay, Deal? buddy. You're not gonna okay. find. Yeah, of course, you didn't find a whiskey bar in Utah, dude. Jeez. But you wore a t-shirt saying "Point me." You, I thought you were saying that it was like I wore like, my like a, I wore my "Show me the way to the next whiskey bar" t-shirt because I was in Utah, where it's like just one step away from prohibition. You know. So anyway. But there was whiskey bars there. I don't know if there was whiskey bars there. Well, that's what I've there's, just said. Are you listening? I heard, I heard that there's family restaurants where you can go to get beer. Um, but if you want to buy actual hard liquor, anything over 15%, I think, you have to go to a state store to buy it. An actual state-run store by the state. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> That's the way that it is, is in Utah. That, yeah, that is very strange. Mormons isn't it? have a very interesting way of doing things. Mm. Oh, one final question. What did you think of Murder Mountain? Uh, it was interesting. Any was interesting. any thought? Yeah, any other thoughts? Know. Do you, do you, know, you know what? I I'm a bit of a cynic. You probably realise that by now. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't help thinking that one of the reasons why they weren't really looking into the Garrett Rodriguez case because mm -hmm. that guy at the top of the mountain the, the you're saying local law enforcement looked at the people on the mountain a lot like Manitowoc looked at the Averys, right? Is that what you're getting at? M more a case of they didn't want to investigate somebody who was beneficial to them okay I wondered if there's, um, you know, the. Usually, where law enforcement 
are nearby to, for, for want of a better word, gangland crime activity. You know, they are not there to try and get rid of it. Officially they are, but in actual fact they help to, perpe to perpetuate it. Yeah, right. They create a the, void that gets filled in by even nastier customers, basically. So yeah, and and they take their cut. Yeah, right. Absolutely. They take the cut, and uh, but no, it, it was it was it was very interesting. Um, I, I I did enjoy did enjoy well both me and my wife enjoyed watching it. You know, I mean this this mm -hmm. sort of idyllic culture that they started us. I mean. I, I never realised that you know you you, you were um, asking about the cannabis ice cream in uh, in Amsterdam <laughs> and uh, all the cannabis stuff, but cannabis is legal in um, California now. It is yeah. I only asked I mean, you about the, the ice cream in Amsterdam because you posted a, a picture of the ice cream parlor for us. That's why mm -hmm. I was telling you about the ice cream in Amsterdam. <laughs> well, you know, to me, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm such a, a, a quiet, good living, you know, yeah, good upstanding uh -huh. citizen. I didn't even know that marijuana and cannabis are the same thing. Oh, you didn't? Oh, well, no. Well, they're not spelt the same. No. They're not pronounced the same. Nope. Where, where, where do the terms come from? I don't know where they got marijuana from. Cannabis I mean, comes from, you know, cannabis is just the technical name for the plant. No, right? okay. Yeah. Marijuana is, mar is, is, that a me name. is that a Mexican word? Uh, marijuana may be a Mexican term for it. Yeah, could be. That's mm -hmm. how it started out. Who knows? I don't know. So, so Humboldt County, is, is that... Uh... That's like North California, yeah? Yeah, it's like Central, I think. Central California, maybe. Well, maybe. it's by Berkeley. So, kind of Northern California, yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and what was interesting, of course, was the fact that, um, and, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody else watching, but the, the fact that the police were going to say that they weren't going to act because there was a confession. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You remember right. that they got a confession out the guy that you know, but right. here's the thing: they got a confession out the guy, albeit coerced. But guess what? He drives them to eight, ten miles away, and they find the body. Right. So the confession is corroborated. Yes. So, so I, I couldn't understand what the uh, what the issue with the with the sheriff's department is. It, well, that's the thing. We have that kind of corroboration. I think it should trump. You know other concerns, and I said that to Steve Moore when I was talking to him. Yeah. Anyway, what times it's over there with you? Because it's now ten past one in the morning, so it'll be ten past five. Um, yeah. What time are you working tomorrow morning? Same as always. What about, <laughs> what about four or five o'clock? You have to get up for something like that. Around five thirty, five fifteen, five thirty. Ooh. Ooh. Yep. I have a I have a long night. I I don't I don't start teaching till eight thirty. Yeah, tomorrow's your Sunday or something, isn't it? Anyway. No Monday. Well, yes, yes, yes. T today has been a really busy day. I started mm -hmm. my first lesson was at eight o'clock. I then I then did all my teaching all the way around till six o'clock, and then I had to go to a lodge committee meeting. Mm -hmm. Boy, are they exciting! I bet. Uh, <laughs> all right, buddy. It's been good talking to you. And you. And sorry, Mark couldn't be here, but at least we got to sing happy birthday to Carla Chase. And uh, well, got to yes. talk about Ricky. Got to talk about you going to see Laura and uh, Steve Drizzen there. Laura Nightrider and Steve Drizzen there in, in Edinburgh. And uh, so, good stuff, buddy. Give us that fishy look once more. No way. Ain't happening. <laughs> you get a smile, that's about it. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, that's All good. Right. Well, if you that's haven't already, good. folks, please hit subscribe and uh, stay tuned for Stacy.
My name's Stacy Seabrook, and I approve Eric Jose on Making a Murderer to be able to use my songs on his channel. Thank you. He's innocent. The day always comes if you're innocent. <laughs> Get on the train Before it leaves the station Wisconsin versus Avery A complete fabrication Get on the train Before it leaves town The truth train is coming Gonna run them down Run them down And we all know Stephen and Brendan were blamed But it does not take a brain surgeon To see that they were framed And yes, we know What this was about The civil suit, the settlement They did not want to pay out, want to pay out And you may hear this song Oh, maybe you don't get it I suggest you look up TikTok Manitowoc on Reddit There you will find trial transcripts Evidence files and reports And you will start to fathom The corruption within the courts And as you shake your head Because everything seems demented You will find yourself in company Of three on bank judges that dissented but don't you worry, you're not going insane. You just happen to sit down on Zellner's true train. Get on the train before it leaves the station. Final destination, inevitable exoneration. Get on the train before it leaves town. The truth train is coming, gonna run them down, run them down. Get on the train. Oh, they say. But they use a badge for an illusion of justice Oh, they say you can trust us Oh, but they use the flag for an illusion of justice Oh, now what they did Convict an innocent man twice With a 16-year-old kid Yes, we can turn away Pretending all the pieces fit Oh, but if we turn away We let them get away with it Touching one, 
not the one supported by them clowns Oh, the superhero one She's gonna tear that house of cards down Oh, they say You can trust us Oh, but they use the badge for an illusion of justice Abuse the flag for an illusion of justice.